Good morning, everyone. First of all, how's everyone doing after focus? Have you guys recovered yet? No? Well, it is so good to see so many of you today, this morning. Everyone's, everyone has their Sunday best on. And I know that during focus, early mornings, late nights, but it was so much fun getting to serve alongside so many of you, having breakfast together, doing barbecues together. And if you miss this year, you definitely, definitely want to come next year. Focus is incredible. One of the things that I love about Focus, though, is that it tells us that Archie always says, they always say that we're actually a family on a mission. That's what I love about Focus. But a family on a mission, I, I keep thinking, I was thinking, well, if we're all on a mission together, what's the individual mission that God has for me? What's the individual mission that God has for you? What's the adventure that God wants to take you on. I was talking to somebody over focus and they were telling me about their story. They, they lived an incredible life. They, 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 li- they had an incredible adventure of God transforming their life. And, and then I, I realized actually that this August, um, it's my 12th birthday. My 12th birthday from coming out of a drug rehabilitation center that I was in when I was 19. And... Um, Oh, no, no. I, I, I just realized that just now, uh, as we were singing, the Lord reminded me of that, of that, of me speaking to this person at Focus and, and talking about adventures. And, and today, what I want to speak to you today about is why you should take the adventure of a lifetime with Jesus. Did you know that your life has purpose? Did you know that your life has meaning? Did you know that you were created by God in a specific way to accomplish a specific task? Did you know that your life could impact the world for good? In today's passage, we're going to see when Jesus calls one of his first disciples, Simon Peter. And we're going to read from Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And and we're going to see how Jesus calls Simon Peter to take the adventure of a lifetime. And we're going to see how Jesus calls you and I to take the adventure of a lifetime. So if you've got your Bibles there with you, let's go to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And we read, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had got out of them and were washing their nets, Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and we took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, They enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And when they had filled both boats, so they began to sink. But but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon, And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. From these passages, we're going to see three reasons why Peter joined Jesus on the adventure of a lifetime, but why you can join Jesus on the adventure of a lifetime. The first point is that Jesus believes in you. From those verses, Jesus had told Peter, cast your nets out, but they had caught nothing. So Peter says, Master, we told all night, we caught nothing. And then he says, when he realizes who Jesus is, he says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. You see, Jesus finds Peter here in a moment of failure. Peter was a fisherman. He, this was his profession. He was an expert. But today, he failed. There was no income for that day. His family wouldn't be fed. They'd completely given up. They were washing their nets. And this is such a laborious task that you definitely don't want to do it twice in one night, especially if you had caught 
nothing. Peter also later we found out was, was somebody who, who was a little bit difficult to be around, let's say. He was somebody who was outspoken. One time he rebuked Jesus. Imagine that. He told God off. Um, one time, some of you are like, what's wrong with that? Uh, outspoken. So, so some, he, Peter was also aggressive. One time he cut off a soldier's ear. He was fearful. He, he even denied Jesus after promising never to do it. And here he meets Jesus and the only thing he can do is fall at his feet, aware of his failures, aware of his faults. But Jesus has a different plan for him. On the cross, Jesus would pay for all of Peter's sins. On the cross, Jesus would pay for all of my sins. On the cross, Jesus would pay for all of your sins, for all our mistakes, so that we would be wiped clean. And here, Jesus looks at Peter and he doesn't see his failures. He doesn't see his mistakes. He doesn't see his faults. Jesus sees Peter for who he would become with Christ in him. Jesus believes in Peter before Peter believes in Jesus. I love how the Apostle John puts it. He says this, we love because he first loved us. And you may be here today and you may feel like God could never use you because you failed. You may be here today and you might be so tired because you've caught nothing. You've tried time and time again and you've come back empty. Business has failed, relationships has failed, being an adult in general has failed, parenting has failed, work has failed. And you just think, God could never use me. But Jesus comes up to Peter in a moment of his failures and says, throw your nets out one more time with me in your boat. You see, Jesus is the God of second, third, fourth, fifth, and even a million chances. Jesus believed in Peter, but Jesus also believes in you. No matter how you've come here today, God loves you. He sees you. He has a plan for your life. And he knows who you will become when you put your trust in him completely. I grew up in an environment when people didn't really believe in me. I was born in a prison. Both my parents were drug addicts. And my family was broken, um, to say the least. I had words spoken over me my whole childhood, which scarred me for so many years. I, I spent many years in counseling, healing almost over the words that were spoken over me. I was told that I wasn't good enough, that I'd never amount to anything, that it was my fault for the failures of my parents and my family. I grew up believing I had no purpose. I grew up believing that I had no reason for living. And it was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. I got so heavily involved in drugs in my teenage years. I left school with no GCSEs and I, I would take so many drugs that I would fall unconscious. So many of my friends died or went to prison. And I remember in the peak of that mess, I remember staying up for five days at a time, sleeping one day, five days at a time without eating or sleeping. And, and I would never say this out loud, but to a certain degree, I, I realized that I almost didn't care if I lived or died anymore. But Jesus came to find me when I had failed at everything. Jesus found me in this drug den in South London and, and he loved me before I could love him. Jesus decided to believe in me before I, I could believe in him. And Jesus started to take me on an adventure of a lifetime. Jesus put people around me that painted a picture of what it was like for God to believe in me. One of those people was a man called Tim Fielder. He's a few years older than me. He's a Welsh rugby player. He's the son of a pastor. And he was the first Christian friend I ever had. And he really took me under his wings. I, I became his friend just after I left rehab. I went to this church and he was one of the leaders there. And I don't know what, why he did this, but he just decided to believe in me. 
He, he would speak life over me. He'd call me a leader before I'd ever led anything. He called me a pastor before I ever led a Bible study. He called me a good man. He said I'd be a good father. He taught me how to read the Bible. He taught me how to teach the Bible. He taught me which sermons to listen to. He, he even one time took me to his house in Wales and, and I got to see where he grew up. And he told me a story of how his father would at dinner spend time with his his children and his wife and ask them how their day went and pray for each one of them. And, and I realized then that that's what I wanted more than anything in this world. And Tim taught me what it meant to be a man, what it meant to have a family. At one point when I was really tempted, Tim even moved in with me for, for about two months. And, and at night when I would really feel tempted to, to go back, um, we'd go for a late night run. We'd come home, have Cheerios, and um, we'd watch sermons, and he would just love me and pray for me and, and be there for me. And Tim was also really hench and massive. He went to the gym, and he taught me how to go to the gym, which was also a bonus. Um, <laughs> but I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Tim. I wouldn't be here speaking to all of you today if Tim hadn't believed in me. But Tim was just a an earthly picture of what it was like for Jesus to ultimately believe in me. Jesus' belief in me is far greater than Tim's belief in me and Jesus' belief in you is far greater than your belief in yourself. Jesus loves you so much. He has a plan for your life and Jesus doesn't give up believing in you. No matter how you feel, no matter what mistakes you've made, no matter what your life may look like today. Jesus believes in you. Every time that you hear a voice that will tell you that you failed or that you're not good, of, good enough or that you're disqualified, just refuse to accept it. Remind yourself of the truth. Jesus believes in me. I love this verse that St. Paul wrote to the letter, in the letter to the Colossians. He says, Christ in you the hope of glory. As long as you live, Christ lives in you. And as long as Christ lives in you, there is hope. There is hope for you because Jesus believes in you. So the first reason why you should take the adventure of a lifetime is because Jesus believes in you. Your failures don't define you. The second reason is that Jesus has more for you. The verse reads, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. Peter was a lifelong fisherman. His friends were fishermen. He had fished in this lake, in this sea, his whole life. He knew exactly the perfect location where to fish. He knew which bait to use. He knew which time to go out. He had all the knowledge in the world to catch fish. But he still caught nothing. For Jesus to tell him to go out and cast him net, his nets out one more time would have been crazy. He'd already finished. He just wanted to go to bed. And so often God calls us to take steps of faith that don't make sense to us. So often God calls us to trust in him and not in our own ability. So often God calls us to do things that push us outside of our safety, that don't make us feel comfortable. But when we take a step of faith, He always provides. He has more for you than you could ever imagine. A life verse for me has always been Ephesians 3.20, which reads, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all, all we ask or imagine, immeasurably more than you could ever imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Throughout the Gospels, when Jesus provides a miracle, there's always overflow. Twelve basketfuls left over. Everybody was fed and then some. Everybody was healed. Jesus has more for you than you could ever dream of. I wish Jesus was there when we were praying for catered camping in the evening. Maybe we would have had a multiplication of food. <laughs> and this is what happens. Sometimes we have our natural capability. 
on our, our, our ability, which there's always a ceiling to it. This is our ability. I hope you can see my writing. Our ability has a roof. Well, this is my ability. Some of you are, look, a lot, look a lot smarter than me, so maybe your ability is up to here. Um, but no matter how, how clever we are, how strong we are, how much we know, how much experience we have, there's always going to be a roof to our ability, to our natural ability. But what God calls us into is to step into God's ability, his supernatural ability for your life and my life. God's ability is here. And for us to go from our ability to God's ability, all we need is faith. God calls us time and time again to take a step of faith, to walk into his supernatural ability for our lives. Ultimately, what this meant for Peter was that he became a disciple, he became an apostle, he saw people's lives changed, he wrote books of the Bible, but also for Peter, it meant that he was martyred for his faith. And following Jesus, even though he has more for us, it's a life of sacrifice. It's a life where Peter ultimately was crucified upside down for his faith. And all of us will carry a cross to follow Jesus. But Jesus says, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This humble Galilean fisherman, Peter, is still being spoken about. 2,000 years after his death in South Kensington, London. Jesus had more for him. But Jesus has more for you too. One of the people who most inspires me and challenges me is, uh, is Jackie Pullinger. She took the, walk, the call of God on her life seriously. At the age of 22, in 1966, she got on a ship to Hong Kong on a simple word that she received from God in a prayer meeting. She began working in the walled city, which was the largest opium producer of the world at that time because it was completely unpoliced. She didn't speak the language. She didn't have any money. She didn't even have any friends there. She left her tidy, comfortable home here in London and took the adventure of a lifetime that was waiting for her. And God had so much more in store for Jackie Pillager than she could ever imagine. He began to use her to minister to gangsters and heroin addicts in the walled city. She would pray for heroin addicts. They'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in an instant, they'll be set free from heroin addiction. She saw thousands of lives changed. She built rehabilitation homes throughout Hong Kong under the charity St. Stephen's Society. And until today, she still ministers there, seeing thousands of lives changed. She took the adventure of a lifetime and she's still on it. But what may God be calling you to do today that doesn't make sense? Dr. Anthony Campolo did a study of 50 people over the age of 95 who were asked one question. If you could live your life over again, what's one thing you'd do differently? And three answers dominated the study. They were, I would reflect more, I would risk more and I would do more things that live on after I am dead. What could you do with your life? What is holding you back? Jesus has so much more for you. Will you trust him? Because as I've been speaking, God may have been reminding you of a, of a dream you once had, of a business you wanted to start, of a profession you wanted to undertake, of a charity you thought may needed to have been formed, of a connect group you may have wanted to lead, of a team you wanted to join, of someone you needed to forgive, of a conversation you need to have. Well, perhaps today's the day. Perhaps today's the day you take the adventure of a lifetime because Jesus believes in you. Jesus has more for you. But also, 
Jesus is calling you. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. The final reason you should take the adventure of a lifetime is because Jesus himself is calling you to do it. Jesus knew that Peter would have to leave everything behind to be fully committed to the adventure that Jesus had in store for him. And of course, it would have been scary for Peter to leave his job, his friends, everything he knew. That's why Jesus says, don't be afraid. It's countercultural for us to leave safety and step into the unknown. And the things that Peter had to leave behind, they aren't necessarily bad things. Money's not a bad thing. A job's not a bad thing. A house is not a bad thing. A family's not a bad thing. Those are all great things. They only become difficult things if they get in the way of our ability to follow Jesus with all our hearts. And sometimes, if we hold on to our past, we're not able to step into our calling. We're not able to step into the more that God has for us. Jesus says this in Mark 2.22, no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. Is there something in your life or someone in your life that might be holding you back from stepping into the adventure that God has in store for you? Some years ago, I was in a relationship that, that wasn't bringing honor to God. I was living in sin and we loved each other. We wanted to get married, but we were not wise with the decisions that we were making. And it felt like our relationship with God was suffering. A wise mentor told me that marriage wouldn't be the best thing because of the complexities of our relationship. And, and I was completely to blame. Thinking about having to leave that relationship was so difficult for me because it was everything that I ever wanted. It was the possibility of a wife, the possibility of a family, the possibility for me to be able to build everything I didn't have. But I just felt, and I heard a subtle voice that, that told me that I'd have to let go of, of the past if I wanted to step into everything that God had in store for me. And it was so, so hard. One of the hardest decisions of my life. But as I was able eventually to, to step out of the relationship and, and I was holding on to Jesus with everything I had, I saw Jesus heal my heart, put people around me to support me and love me. And he's taken me on the adventure of a lifetime that I know that I wouldn't be here today if I kept holding on to the past. And I want to ask you the question, what may God be calling you to leave behind? Sometimes there are things that make us feel comfortable, things that make us feel safe, things that we hold on to, and they almost become like a lifeline for us. But God wants us to leave all those things behind and follow him with all our hearts. So many of, often we're prepared to give Jesus our boat, we're prepared to give Jesus our nets, we're prepared to even give Jesus our time and our money. But Jesus is calling us to be prepared to leave everything behind to follow him. I want to encourage you today to take the adventure of a lifetime because Jesus believes in you. No matter if you failed, no matter how you've come here today, Jesus believes in you. There is hope for you. Jesus has more for you, immeasurably more than, it, than you could ever dream of or even imagine. All you need to do is take a step of faith and trust him. And Jesus is calling you. 
You're in safe hands. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. If you let something go, you'll be safe in his hands. Because imagine the impact you could have in the world. Imagine if you chose today to take the adventure of a lifetime with Jesus. Imagine the lives that would be changed. The world will look different as a result of the decisions that you make. The world will look different as a result of your ability to say, Jesus, I leave everything behind and I choose to follow you. Take me on the adventure of a lifetime. Shall we pray? Let's stand.